Hey, we're here today with Amy Dutton. She is a lead maintainer on the Redwood JS core team. She's also a co-host on the Compressed.fm podcast, and she's involved in lots of things. Thank you for joining me today, Amy. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. You bet. Hey, I want to ask a few easy questions to get started before we just dive into web dev. So like, what's your favorite type of pie? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I'm going to say apple pie, which seems pretty standard, but I'm going to be very specific in the type of apple pie. My mom has this recipe where it's like shaved apple. So it's not like these huge apple chunks. So I prefer the like very thin <laughs> apple flavoring of a pie, but not like the hot apple chunk pie. <laughs> And the crust is so important too, I think. On, uh, uh, on yeah, yes. is one of my favorites. So hard to choose. Uh, yeah. Another question. Have you been binging anything on uh, Netflix or other streaming service? Or maybe there's a book you're reading that you want to tell everybody about. Yeah, so I'll answer both. My husband and I have been watching Lessons in Chemistry. That's on Apple TV+. Plus, and that's really good. I actually read the book about a year ago. So it's been fun to watch the show. And... I think Brie is the actress's name. She's also Mrs. Marvel, if you're into that. So she's on that show as well, does a fantastic job. Um, but it's a it's a good show. And then reading, I am one of those people that reads several books at one time, uh, super annoying. But Noah Kagan has a book out, I think he released it a month-ish ago, called The Million Dollar Weekend, that's all about creating product and being able to validate that just in the course of a weekend to determine if it's an idea with, worth pursuing. So I've really enjoyed going through that. Um, I also really enjoy reading about productivity um, because I'm a nerd, but Ali Abdal has a book that he released a couple months ago, several months ago, um, about called Feel Good Productivity. Um, and the thing that I like about that is it's also just kind of leaning into the things that you find interesting and some of the psychological hacks to being the most productive that you can be. And he has a few nuances in how he approaches it that you won't find in a lot of other productivity books. So I really enjoyed his approach. Very cool recommendations. All right, now we'll get into web dev, but one more softball first. Just what was the first code editor you ever used? <laughs> yeah, I think it was BB Edit. Um, so I've been coding for over 20 years. I'm not sure you could even find BB Edit anymore. If it wasn't BB Edit, it was Dreamweaver. Um, which is kind of funny now with some of the online editors that you get with like Webflow and stuff like that, where I feel like it's just a throwback to what Dreamweaver was 20 years ago. I understand. Uh, I was in Notepad and TextPad myself. So yes, <laughs> I'm going back to use Notepad plus plus. plus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now now really getting into it. So if you could give only one piece of advice to the beginners that watch my channel, what would you suggest? Yeah, I would say that if you're having trouble understanding a concept, don't feel like that says anything about you and your inability to be able to program or learn how to program. So I know that there's several concepts now that I think back and think, oh man, that's such an easy concept. Like I remember really struggling with the idea of arrays. Like I just couldn't get that to click. And now it's like, well, that, yeah, that's a standard primitive. Like you have to understand that. Um, but it's something that I struggled to grasp what that was. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not capable of programming. I've been doing this for over 20 years now. But what it did say was the way that I was learning it, the person that I was listening to didn't explain it in a way that clicked with me. So one of the hacks that I found as I'm learning new things is just to find a whole bunch of different resources and how different people say and explain different things. And you'll generally find somebody where their explanation, it just clicks with you. Or even if their explanation doesn't click, try and find something else. And eventually kind of the accumulation of all those different resources, it'll start to make sense. But if it doesn't click that first time, it's not on you. Like just keep, keep moving, keep pursuing and uh, keep pressing in. That's a very good point. Uh, I discussed this with uh, fellow YouTube educators like yourself. And we say, Hey, even if we're all teaching the same thing, we each have a different delivery method, a different way we do things. And sometimes one person clicks more with a, a student than another, and that's just fine. Yeah, totally. 
And usually I'll lean on several people just because kind of combining those two things or they'll cover a different aspect of it that I didn't know about before. And so I've found it helpful to kind of cross-reference and use multiple sources. Absolutely. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. Okay, now I know we're going to talk about Redwood JS in just a moment, but before we get there, I want to ask in 2024 here, right now, what other technology has you excited? What, what has got you fired up for web dev here this year? Well, this is going to be a little bit of a cop out <laughs> because it is kind of indirectly Redwood, but I really am excited about React server components and some of the things that it allows you to do. And the reason I said that it's a little bit of a cop out is because we're currently implementing that within Redwood JS. So I'm excited about its implementation and what that'll look like. Uh, and just, you know, if I can make it really about React Server Components, just where that is taking the JavaScript community and some of the avenues that it opens up. Very cool. Yes, uh, that's got me fired up as well. And, and it, I think it's changing the way we do lots of things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now let's, let's talk about Redwood JS. Uh, for those viewers that I've got on my channel here that haven't heard of it before, what is it and how will it help them build applications? Yeah, so Redwood JS is a React framework. It is a full stack React framework. So a lot of times when you're working with other frameworks like Next or Remix, a lot of times they'll focus more on the front end piece and you can bring your own back end. So you can connect that to Supabase or Zeta or AppWrite. There's all different back end as a service providers that you can connect to. Well, Redwood has that built in and we use GraphQL to be able to provide front end and back end. So what's kind of unique about Redwood is you could just use it in a front end context. You could just use it in a back end context or you could use it in both. And so it provides a lot of opportunities and flexibility for your project and what you're trying to accomplish. Well, very cool. And, and I know you and I met at that conference and that was about a month ago and you sent me some information and I'm looking forward to going through it. I can't believe it's already been a month. It seems like time flies, but I promise I'm going to dive into this a little bit too. You've got me very curious. Awesome. Yeah, there's a few things about Redwood that make Redwood unique. So if you're looking at it and trying to evaluate what's the difference between Next and Remix, I'll kind of point out a couple of things that you might notice right out of the gate. One of them is a router. So Redwood supports a single file router system. So if you're coming from something like Rails, this will look very familiar. But if you're coming from something like Next or Remix, it'll look a little bit different because they use file and folder structures. So if you name your file th with a certain convention, that will be the route that your project or your application will recognize. With Redwood, you have a single file called your routes file, and that lists out every single file and route that you're using. So you might map an about page.ts if you're using TypeScript to a um, about route. So you could say slash about. And the nice thing about that is it allows you a little bit more flexibility in how you structure and organize your folders because you're using the route to determine what uh, page and what file you need to deliver when the user accesses a particular route. The other thing that it's really great at is a concept called cells, which I haven't seen in any other framework. And what that does is when you go and fetch data, a lot of times you have to account for different states. You have to account for a loading state, a blank state, a success state, a failure state. And so you have a lot of conditionals that you're writing within your code to make sure that the user gets the feedback that they need and that you're delivering the appropriate component based on the data that you're getting back from the server. So instead of having to write all of those conditionals for you, Redwood has a concept called a cell, which there's some magic running under the hood that will deliver the appropriate component for that state. And it's smart enough to figure out what it got back from the server and then deliver the what you need to your front end. Hey, very cool. I'm, I'm definitely interested in this and going to check it out. So 
be looking for a video on my channel about it at some point too. Awesome. I just, I'm going to hold you to always, it. <laughs> there's so many things I want to dive into, but I'm promising you I'm getting to this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, hey, before we go, let's tell everybody where they can find you on the web. You've got some great tutorials that I highly endorse. I recommend for those watching, check out your channel. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so if you go to youtube.com slash self teach me, you'll find all of my videos there. I am working through a course that I'm like slowly dropping for free uh, on Redwood if you wanna be able to build a full stack application so you can check that out. There's also some videos there about SVGs. I am an SVG snob. I love the power and the flexibility that they give you. Um, there's also some videos there about Git and probably my most popular video is one about creating a custom audio player if you wanna build that within React. Very cool. Now you've got some other things coming up too. Let's tell everybody about those before we go. Sure, so I am running the first cohort of two week build challenge. So if you go to twoweekbuild.com, um, that's running from March 1st through 15th. And so it's just, the rules are simple. You just pick something that you wanna build and you build it within two weeks. You just have to ship it at the end of two weeks. And the thing that I love about that is it pushes you to deliver and to ship. And because you only have two weeks, you're going to have to limit the scope. And that's a good thing because that way you're working with something that's tight and that's doable. So if you're listening to this and it's beyond March 1st, I am planning on running a second cohort, April 1st through 15th. So you can still go to twoweekbuild.com and register for the second cohort. And speaking of content that you could do any month, you also have some <laughs> Advent content, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be the Christmas season for you to go through that, right? That's right. So if you go to adventofjs.com or adventofcss.com, uh, during the month of December, I ran two different Advent challenges. So you can sign up for one or both. You can also go back and look at the 2021 and 22 edition of that or the 2023. So if you're looking at the 2021 and 22, so it's the same content that I did for two years in a row, that's all vanilla JavaScript and vanilla CSS. And those projects are actually kind of linked together. You'll In the advent of CSS, we would style it. And then the advent of JS, you would hotwire it. Um, so that one, the solutions are all free, but you do have to pay for the challenges. For the 2023 edition, Redwood actually sponsored that. So if you are interested in Redwood, that's also another great place that you can get plugged in is because they sponsored it, all of that, the solutions and the challenges are all free. So you can work through that at any time of year, even though it is Christmas themed. You do have a lot going on. And of course, I can't <laughs> let you forget to mention Compressed FM, right? That's right. So <laughs> thank you for <laughs> helping me out with these things. So I do co-host a podcast called Compressed FM, and we uh, interview different people within the industry. So I've enjoyed using it just as a networking tool to be able to meet other designers and developers within the community. But there are a few episodes where we talk about hot topic issues, or we'll talk about, mostly if you go through the backlog, if you're interested in say React hooks, or if you're interested in learning TypeScript, we have episodes for all of those things. Uh, we usually record live on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Central, so you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, we have our own channel on Twitch. If you go to Compressed FM, you can check that out. You can jump in live, and then the, of course the audio versions are released later. All right. Well, thanks, Amy. I appreciate you joining me. And we're actually going to continue this interview just a little bit, but you're going to see the second half of this interview on my Patreon. Hey guys, I recently started a Patreon and I'm already giving shout outs to Holy Coder, who is a progress provider and Eldad, who joined at the senior member level. Also shout outs to all of the junior members that have joined. Thank you all so much. You're helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't joined, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. I've got exclusive content there that you won't find on YouTube, and I've also got early release content. Hope to see you there. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.